Welcome to The Real Money Show. My name is Jeremy Wiseman. I'm joined by Jerry Karaya. And today we have a special guest, high impact energy coach, Tracy L. Clark. The phone number 1-877-8-SILVER. The website, guildhallwealth.com. Now you might be wondering, why do we have a high energy impact coach on the show today? Well, one of the reasons is because there's a lot of crazy stuff happening in the world, number one. Number two, precious metals are energy. They are stored energy. It costs money to pull them out of the ground. And then once you've done it, it's stored energy. It's stored value. And so we want to kind of bring that aspect into it as well. But we've had her on the show before. It's been amazing. Tracy, welcome to The Real Money Show. Welcome. Welcome. I am so happy to be here. You're correct. A lot of crazy things going on in the world right now. <laughs> and I know we're going to address some of them for sure. Um, it's been a crazy week in the market, too. It was an interesting week because it, it felt like... It felt like some of the some of the spark in the market went out a little bit with the Reddit. A little bit. It was a little. The phones were a little bit quieter at the beginning of the week. It gave us a chance to catch up. We were still quite busy, um, and then as the week drew on, it got more and more busy again. And then for some reason today, the market went crazy. And I think part of that, Jerry, is because the price of gold came down and is really testing a technical bottom. Yeah, fifty day is the moving average, seventeen eighty to seventeen fifty. We did test that during the week um, as a, as a response to. Uh, the uh, ten-year yield um, percentage, the ten-year yield uh, testing 1.3 percent. Uh, this is an either an indication of volatility to come, or um, or at the same time an indication of inflation on the way. But it does look on the short term very attractive. Uh, as a result, the the gold prices test a little downward. But again, when we're talking inflation. Um, we're seeing a, a future expectation of, of higher gold prices. So that is the relationship. So we did see some volatility, but we have some good support on the, on the, for the upside for precious metals. And we'll get into what's going on in the metals a little bit deeper and talk more about that. Um, Tracy, I was actually just having a conversation with someone earlier today. And he was making a lot of observations about what's happening. And we sort of titled it of that things are morphing in the market, that, that things are being morphed. It's, it's not what it seems. Fed printing money. People are out of work. How can the stock market keep going higher? There seems to be something that just doesn't feel right with a lot of people. Is this something that you're, that you're seeing or experiencing as well in your field? Yeah, you know what? I, I work with people all over the world, so it's nice because I get the, it's, it's that consistent message coming from everybody because we call it critical thinking or critical feeling. You should be doing both. And right now, a lot of people are doing a lot of critical thinking going, this doesn't add up. What is happening? How do we have the highest, well, look in Canada, the highest unemployment rate and, you know, things are still skyrocketing and houses are through the roof. And so I see it and what people are starting to feel and why they're actually looking at precious metals and things they may not have looked at before is because their body is telling them something isn't right, even though they're looking and they're saying, okay, the numbers don't add up and the stats don't add up. And we could relate that back to, you know, mainstream media putting out numbers and stats that don't add up. And so you sort of, you look at that and people are saying something has to change. And so, Money is energy. Like you said, it comes out of the ground. I deal with a lot of people on their wealth vibe, and now they're starting to come to me and say, I need to look at something different with my money. It doesn't feel right what's happening in the market. And that's their body telling them they need to re-educate or look at something else. And precious metals comes up all the time because of the history. And they say, and they're afraid though. They're afraid to look at precious metals because of a lot of narrative, as you probably know. But then I say, if you start to shift that energy in your body and start to understand what's happening with precious metals, they start to form this like affair <laughs> with it because it is energy. It feels like energy, silver, gold, like it's just, it draws them in. And so they're really starting to look all outside of what they've been programmed and conditioned in mainstream investing. And that's, that's why you're starting to also see a lot of people, they may not know why yet. But every day I hear people saying, I need to look outside the box. I need to look at something like precious metals because something isn't feeling right. So they may not be able to put their finger on it, but they know something doesn't feel right just intuitively. 
every day. And, and Jerry, what do you think about this idea of people observing market distortions and just things not feeling right? Are you seeing that with the people you speak to every day? I think that is a, a major concern right now. It's very eye-opening. We see bubbles bubbling in almost every market sector. We are at extreme valuations in the stock prices. Tracy mentioned the real estate prices also. Things don't seem right when we look in reality um, from a mom and pop level that things are just not normal as far as uh, businesses go. We don't see uh, we don't see any business growth. We're seeing business closures. We're seeing high levels of debt. And how are we going to be servicing this debt going forward in the future? So yes, there is a lot of noise out there and very little peace of mind. And a lot of it has to be directed. And it does get directed to wealth. And how am I going to preserve my wealth? Not so much looking to grow it. Yes, we want to grow it and, and, and achieve gains. But how am I going to get that as the quote goes, I'm more concerned about the return of my money. How am I supposed to get that? Well, I find it interesting, um, this idea of fear of making money, because I see that a lot in, in markets. I see people scared to what it would look like if they made a lot of money. You know, I've, I've heard with some people, they decide, you know what, I'm going to pay my withholding taxes and take the money out of my RSP now. Because if the market goes up, I'm going to have to pay a lot more taxes later on. Um, Tracy, how does that come into, into what you do? I'm, I'm sure you come across people who are scared of success. Every day, every day. And it's actually one of the biggest reasons that will make people, you know, wait a year or two years. Or I've had so many clients because I do talk so much with the energy and precious metals. And they're like, why didn't I act like five years ago when you brought this up? And I said, well, because it's learning, it's information, it's new information. And so many people, they're so afraid of what does it mean if you do make more money? Who are you responsible for or accountable for? And even preserving their money. And then they get so focused on losing it that they forget even that they can preserve it. So that's usually why I say to people, don't wait until there's a crisis. And there's a lot of people waiting for a crisis. And I, when I educate people on the energy of money, I'm like, you need to look at and understand outside of the box, like the precious metals. So you're not waiting for the crisis. You're actually, you know, you're prepared for what's coming through. And the fear of success, 99% of the reason people create blockages from learning something different of what they can do with their money, 100%. The, the number one eight seven seven eight silver and the website guildhallwealth.com. Yeah, it's interesting, Tracy, because I, I literally spoke with someone today and, um, you know, first time getting involved in the market, trying to get out of mutual funds and uh, a couple conflicting things were going on for, for her in particular, which was one, she's not happy with the performance. She, you know, it's obvious, hey, if the market's been going up for for over 10 years, I think 12 years, the stock market's been rising. How much higher can it go? The valuations are crazy. Jerry and I, you talked. we talked last week about the fact that the, the Dow is 200% of GDP. <laughs> I mean, that is seriously overvalued. And yet, and yet at the same time, she had a friend who um, had experienced communism and seeing assets torn away. Mm -hmm. And so there was this oscillating or this debate in her mind between, do I just stick with things that I don't really own? Or I have to now face the idea of I might actually buy an asset that could be seized, it, which was, which was, uh, it was, it was difficult for her. Um, but what we ended up talking about was the fact that inflation is robbing your wealth. Mm -hmm. You have to understand where you are right now today, which is inflation is, is, is confiscating your wealth every single day. And this analysis is, is it nearly, uh, really leading to paralysis and inactivity for people? What is, we see all of these realities, you know, talking about the negative realities of potential communism, these communist type uh, fiscal policies and mandates being uh, dr drummed up almost daily. Can this lead to paralysis uh, in terms of what you're dealing with, Tracy? Uh, you're talking about, you know, you know what we're seeing, all the fear factors, and there's now uh, an encroachment to our rights potentially. Are you seeing that um, that you have to actually challenge people to get started and get active? 
Yeah, you do. And part of it, too, is think about this. When people actually are starting to hold their precious metals, so even if they have them in your vault, and I hear this all the time when people actually experience with the metals, they now have responsibility. And unfortunately, our systems have always said, we'll we'll tell you what to do. We'll tell you how to be responsible. We'll tell you what to do. And that's what we're in, we're in right now a lot. And so when it comes to owning it, then they're all of a sudden responsible. And then it's, it's the fear of, well, then, it, it, you know, if they have it or they tell me what to do, then, you know, I'm not accountable for anything. So there's a lot of programs that people have when it, it, it is around fear and it is around accountability as well when they're holding their wealth. And that is the biggest thing is people, I always say to them, if you can break out of that pattern very quickly and understand that you can hold it and own it, you're, you're literally going to increase your wealth size thousand percent. In the next segment, let's talk about this a little bit further, this idea of deprogramming a little bit of what were these narratives that build up over time and what would happen if the precious metals just become completely unleashed. Because right now it definitely feels like there's a, there's a thumb on the button a little bit. Uh, people are asking, why is that happening? We're going to get into that a little bit more on the show. We're talking about energy and gold and silver and its impact on our, our own thoughts and what we can do in, with regards to success. And one of the things we were just talking about before was about this idea that we get programmed over time. And how do we, how do we unprogram a little bit to be able to open up our mind, critical thinking, to look at other other avenues and that more and more and this is something Tracy you're you're bringing up and I'd like you to maybe talk a little bit more about it that there's an energy going on it certainly feels like it that people are waking up and they want that critical thinking and there's things that are happening that are making them say this doesn't make sense I need to open my eyes more I need to to ask more questions and it's leading to people casting away narratives that have been with them for years. Can you talk a little bit about that and what you're seeing, say, over the last year or, or even six months? Yeah, uh, the last six months have definitely been on fire with that. It's, you know, we're, we're all programmed, whether it's your family or whatever, media. There's programming that's constantly running. I mean, you, you create this belief system, especially around finances. And some people, a lot of people don't even like to talk about money. They don't want to look at their money. And that's why... When they're, when they're really looking at something different, like precious metals, it's very hard for them because the programming is, we will take care of it to you. Give your money to someone else. Let them take care of it. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but it doesn't allow your system to develop new ways of thinking and being. And so as the people that I know I deal with a lot, they're like... I feel like my money's stagnant because I'm not learning enough or I'm not asking enough questions. And so we give our power naturally over to another entity rather than learning it ourselves. And so that, that it's basically relearning, but what people I always say to do is you start to take a baby step. So when someone says to me, well, what about gold and silver? Why am I attracted to this energetically? I will tell them, like, go listen to your podcast, go listen to, you know, go and do some research and then start to ask yourself, well, what are the possibilities if this is true? What if it, we have this inflation coming? And I know when I look at this, that the data doesn't add up. So what can I do? Like, start asking these questions. And what I find is that people come back and a spark goes on and it's, they go, oh, maybe what I've been told every day of my life isn't exactly true around how I handle my money. And that little spark is what will lead them to say, I want to get one round of silver, or I want to just put a little bit of money over there or into gold. And then they start to say, what's the next step? What is inflation? What is happening? Because we're not conditioned any of this in school, as you know. And so as we get out, there's different narratives and everybody has to find that narrative that works for them. But it's by asking the different questions. Is everything that I'm being told over here, is there another side to that story? And can I look at it? And can I go research it? And then how do I feel about it? And that's how that wealth vibe starts to change because everybody's programming around wealth is very, most of it is through their family history and most of it is what we're told on TV, unfortunately, or just in that programming of certain schoolings and books. 
And so when they start to go outside that box, they can start to feel. And that's the thing I think people forgot is they feel. And we, you and I have had this conversation a lot. And when you hold a bar of silver, you can feel it. So no matter what your brain is telling you, when I say to people, hold it and feel it, then they're like, there's something here. And they start to do more research. What's it for? What's the industrial metal for? How was it throughout history? And they get this drive to want to learn more, which then removes the programming that was just like, oh, forget about gold and silver. Why would you want that? Because there's a lot of that programming out there. Mm -hmm. And so it's been really kind of, as you know, pushed aside for many different uh, reasons <laughs> but but that's how they start they feel it and when they start to feel it they know there's something they need more of yeah one thing i want to uh, touch on that you said i think is really important is this idea of not learning enough that that there was a time where you didn't need to learn you could just trust the guy behind the curtain and it was fine you know you could throw a dart and make money um and that was okay and i think that eventually what happened is some that somewhere along the lines that narrative broke down where people something that we hear often is uh, i'm not i'm not my mutual funds aren't performing i thought the stock market was at all time highs how come it's not how come i'm not seeing those gains and then as well people are starting to run out of options in terms of they can feel that the stock market's too high. They can feel that, well, you know, I had a conversation just this morning. The, the gentleman said, I don't know how my daughter's ever going to buy a piece of property at these, at these rates, at these prices, and it just doesn't feel right. And something's got to give. And then you start looking and asking questions and you say, well, what is undervalued? And you start to look at, at gold and silver. But also this idea of just once you it's not just owning it in your hand, but once you start learning about it, once you become engaged, as we would say, like have skin in the game, you start paying attention to it. Now you're engaged in it more than just having someone dictate it to you, right? And something else, um, and I'd love to get your opinion on this, Jerry, because I remember something you were talking about there, um, Tracy, reminded me of, uh, of Kiyosaki, Raymond Kiyosaki, who, who, uh, talks, who has a book called The conspiracy of the rich and it's all about how not just what what you're told through your history through your family but what they don't teach you about money um, and so and this was a book that came out probably before its time about 10 years ago but this idea of of trying to keep people in the dark and and keeping them not accountable to their money Jerry what do you think well, this is very true. Uh, there is definitely a narrative that is trying to redirect attention away from what money is and what money is not. We're seeing the effects of looking at other asset classes, like for example, Bitcoin, we're seeing that that play out. Um, but as far as we, you and I were talking about the cr uh, chronological, uh, going back and looking at the chronology of um, of gold going throughout history, this is something that we used to say a lot of is money it, this is an investment that stands the test of time and one thing that I've noticed throughout my week especially a lot of people are testing that pre-programming or that notion that no you, you actually shouldn't be looking at gold and as soon as they are getting that pushback of not going after gold that actually launched them towards guild hall and, and towards us and asking about it and trying to get filtered through all of the noise as i say and and look to acquire something tangible because the effects of the money printing we're all seeing it we're all seeing the loss of purchasing power as we go to the stores and we try to buy a house or cars or shoes prices are moving up and it's all natural because of uh, the loss of purchasing power. If you increase the M1 money supply, this is the effect that it's going to have on you and your future generations to come. So investments that stand a test of time, we've been around for, gold has been around for centuries and it will continue to be around. And, and it's definitely an energy that people are gravitating towards. Now, one thing I want to talk about here, there's, there's this kind of difference between, um, Tracy, between being defensive, but also being opportunistic and you know we look at precious metals typically as okay well we want to protect I mean, here's a quick example the fed 
in the last month has added almost three quarters of a trillion dollars to their balance sheet. They're well on their way to surpassing eight trillion. And we were talking about narrative. And I think the fact that, you know, maybe in 2008, they printed a few trillion dollars. It seemed like a massive amount at the time. But, you know, we could we could toss it under the rug and interest rates went down and they never came back up. But, you know, the world kept on spinning. And so the, the markets moved up. No one really cared this time around back in March with the pandemic. It was hard to ignore that people were just the, the amount of money that the, the central banks were just putting out there. And so on the one hand, we want to be defensive, right? So, and on the other hand, we want to look at opportunities. And I'd love to get your perspective, Tracy, on this idea of when people are looking to protect themselves, but also grow. Yeah, well, and it's it's also within themselves. It's interesting because, Jerry, you said that um, well, that let's also look at the world of how many other countries are accumulating gold. But you, you really don't hear it that often, right? I always say you look at – I always like to go under and look and see what people are doing that they're not telling you really. Like it's not it's not common knowledge unless you know where to go. Like you guys would know where to go. I would know where to go. And so that tells you right there there's a narrative. And it's exactly – a lot of people – can shy away as well when they have the opportunity and you'll hear this in life oh, I wish I would have done that because I knew at the time and I didn't do it and this is the perfect time and this is also that's where a fear comes up for people as well and back to what you said in the last segment was fear of what do I do if I make all this money or what do I do if I now increase who am I responsible for you're responsible for yourself you may have to pay some more taxes but I say well okay pay more taxes means you made a bunch more money <laughs> like, that's right uh, I yeah. totally agree <laughs> yeah like, who cares? so it is and so there is that fear that people will come across and they can you know why did I sell my metals too early or how come I didn't hold on or whatever it might be and that's that comes within a person that has to start to understand what is their fear and again like I like you said it look around the world how many countries have been stockpiling gold and I keep saying that to people I'm like that alone tells you a big picture story that people don't talk about very often yeah and I think that you know I'll tell you a narrative that's kind of tossed around uh, a little bit in the gold sphere is this kind of idea or concept that you know gold could go to ten thousand dollars silver could go to a thousand dollars but do we want to know what the world looks like if gold were to do that and I kind of think yeah I do yeah. because if you own it you're you're you, ready you did just fine mm -hmm. and uh, and, and you know, if that's what it takes for um, gold to be a good value for a backing of a currency, then you do want to see that world. That's exactly the world you want to see. You want to use gold as the bridge for what could happen next. Mm -hmm. We saw that with Brexit. You know, when, when Brexit happened, the, the British pound dropped 30% against a basket of currencies and gold went up 30%. You either had gold or you didn't. You either hedged or you, or you were trying to come up with an extra 30%. Mm -hmm. um, the euro, when the euro transferred over, there were a lot of countries that didn't didn't do well and a lot of, some countries that did do well. But the idea was if you already had gold at the time, you would have been able to, to handle that transfer into into the next next phase. Mm -hmm. um, I think maybe that's something, uh, uh, maybe that's where we can go next here, Tracy, this idea of where we are energetically right now versus where we might be energetically in a year or two. Um, I feel like this month in particular has been just absolutely crazy. I mean, just what we're seeing in the world um, has been nuts mm -hmm. in, in terms, you know, the freak storms in Texas, the ending of the Keystone pipeline, people losing jobs, yet the numbers are going down all around the world. Um, you know, there's a lot of, just a lot of upheaval. Um, you know, we have about a minute left, Tracy. What are your thoughts on that uh, moving into the next segment? Well, I can tell you in my world, this is the year that will go down in history. This is the year everyone will look back, not last year, and say, oh my God, everything changed because what's what's happening is our systems are broken. We all know this. It's You look at anything you want to look at in systems we functioned in, they're done. And so this is the collapse of the old systems bringing in the new. So what better time, I say, that you want to be well positioned. And gold and silver is part of that because when you're crumbling an old system and bringing in the new, it's 
you cannot even describe what it's going to be like because we're rebuilding. It's like going through the birth canal. We're joined today on The Real Money Show by Tracy Clark. She's a high-impact energy coach. And if you think that, why, why are we discussing that? Because at the end of the day, markets are energy, precious metals are energy. There's something you can feel in the air, and we want to understand it more and more, and that's really her focus. Tracy, before we go any further, why don't you tell everyone how they can get in touch with you and how they can find out more information about the things that you do? Yeah, uh, TracyLClark.com. So everything's there. <laughs> everything's there. YouTube, Instagram. Yeah, best place to go. Yeah, and and your and a book, of course. And we have a book. Yeah, I have a book on Amazon that was launched in December that actually has uh, skyrocketed. So if people want to understand more about why they do things the way they do and break their patterns and habits, uh, it's called God, Where Are You? It's Me, uh, and it's all about energy and giving you tips and things that you can do to change your world and my life story as well. Yeah. And and the idea here is to bring a bring a little more of the body energy to the head energy as well, right? That we that we yeah. ignore so much of the of our our hearts and our bodies rather than and just kind of stick with what the mind is telling you and being convinced in and out of things. Mm-hmm. You, you, you know, that, you will skyrocket. Yeah, your system will tell you exactly what's going on. <laughs> well, we will talk a lot about skyrocketing in just a few minutes. But first, let's talk about where we are. And that is that things are changing rapidly. We're seeing what feels like the end of a certain system. And you were just starting to talk about that. And I thought, let's revisit that. And then uh, Jerry's got some information about how that might apply to the market. So where are we right now, Tracy? Are, are, are we at the beginning or the end? We are at the end. So all of these old systems that we've all lived in, we've all been born into, they're not working anymore. People know it, they feel it, they see it. There's a big crumbling happening. And so we are, I would say we are right in the birthing process in the canal. If you've ever had a baby, know anyone who's had a baby, it can take hours, it can take a long time, it can take minutes. So right now, the end of all of these systems that we've functioned in that don't work for all of humanity are actually starting to crumble. And that can be a long, painful process. It can feel slow. And so they're all changing and they're going to be resetting and rebirthing into something new, which is better for humanity. Although a lot of people I know have a narrative that they think it's going to go the other way. But remember, when something crumbles and we have to pull that foundation down, it can be scary. You can be feel afraid. You can have these fears that come up, but there's nothing to fear if you actually understand we will build to something better. It's taking time. And this is the year a lot of truths come out. This is a year, especially I say to people, April, May, um, (laughs) a lot of energy of a lot of truth right to the end of the year. But then we have to rebuild them. We're going to have to rebuild these systems. And Jerry, you said it a little bit. Like, Why are people looking at crypto, gold, silver? Because they're looking at these how are we moving out of this old space that only worked for a few people in the world to a space that works for everybody? And that's going to take time. It doesn't happen overnight, but it's going to be very positive. And that's why it's a great time, I say to people, to really get out of your comfort zone and understand these areas that we're talking about today and how they can prosper through it and be positioned to prosper you know, when these new systems are unfolding. Because if you have precious metals, you'll be able to actually, many creative solutions in there to prosper and move forward. Stop talking to your friends. Stop talking to the people that don't understand where you're going and get out of the fear. Because when something new comes, there's always that process. And it's it can create a lot of fear. But if you're positioned right, like we were saying in the last segment, you'll ride through it with ease and grace. And don't worry if people around you aren't coming along. That's their choice. Just keep going. And they will eventually, Tracy. I couldn't agree more. Yeah, I do believe that we are at the end of this uh, this financial system. We're hearing and reading a lot about a uh, great financial reset, if you want to call it that, or some other type of reset, uh, which I believe in. And, and as I mentioned in the last show, yeah, there's a huge opportunity. You need to position with precious metals uh, to not only, as we know, precious metals has have been the bedrock of any financial system. We're going back centuries, and it will be 
as important going forward. We are at the tail end as well of that massive 50-year cup and handle, as I talked about last week on the show, uh, for some tremendous topside potential for physical precious metals. The silver price is ready to snap, and we're seeing this energy, this movement and coordinated effort of people looking to acquire the physical precious metals. It started with the, the Reddit movement. Yeah, it was a coordinated energy towards it, but it really opened the floodgates, and people want to take delivery so much so that we're seeing a change in the paper pushing uh, the, the narrative that uh, you know these bullion banks are shorting silver suppressing as much as possible their charade is almost up we saw last week that two major ETFs rewrote their prospectus Jeremy and Tracy their prospectus now reads that literally there is the demand for silver may temporarily exceed the supply the availability the available supply is just not there and we're seeing this sinking ship of paper pushers and their system of paper pushing coming to a a halt a massive stop and we're seeing we've seen the rats leaving that empty ship with scotia makata's exit last year uh and and ted butler wrote that jp morgan has reversed its long-standing position of being massively short silver to going long go going long and even further last week yeah, we did see talk about hearing about Warren Buffett uh, reducing his exposure to gold. Well, a lot of people are doing that, including BlackRock this past week, the largest asset manager, sold a third of its GLD, again, it's ETF, I know, shares in, the, in late 2020 and put a large chunk, actually, they increased their silver position by close to 5,000%. What's going on in silver? Why is this, why is this action towards silver happening? Because for us it is an energy it's a massive movement towards getting the physical and we're seeing that on the grassroots level it's so exciting to be seeing people waking up questioning the system and doing something about it and silver it's anti-bubble we all know it's anti-viral as well how amazing silver is it is an intrinsic metal intrinsic value once you get your hands in it on it it did that for me Tracy it transformed me uh, and especially when someone told me don't buy gold it was a financial planner that don't buy silver goodness that 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 coiled me and it sprung me towards precious metals I haven't looked back that's something that that we've kind of seen a lot this week this idea that people are, are Pooing the market a lot more this past week in in articles and such, and I, I kind of feel like you know you're over the target when, right? When people are starting to to talk poorly about it, but at the end of the day, there's not enough silver out there to to handle all of our needs, and it's so undervalued right now, and there's just not enough product to go around, and this last push by the the banks and the, and the bullion banks to keep the price low came at a massive cost and I think that the energy around the reddit was a nice boost in the market and I think ultimately it's going to be an incredible uh, incredibly good thing for the market um, here we are though it's back to the fundamentals let's get into some of those fundamentals and bring that all together in the next segment the number one eight seven seven eight silver the website guildhallwealth.com and you're listening to the real money show on global news radio 640 Toronto. You are listening to a paid commercial program. Unless otherwise identified, the guests on the program are employees of or otherwise represent the advertiser. The opinions expressed therein are those of the advertiser and do not necessarily reflect the views and policies of Global News Radio 640 Toronto. Welcome to the Real Money Show, the number one eight seven seven eight silver and the website guildhallwealth.com. We're talking about the physical gold and silver market. The energy around that market, the changes that it's going to take for you to be in this market and to be a success in this market and to take advantage of this market. It's one of the only markets right now that is undervalued and in some ways still ignored a little bit. Tracy, what do you think about that? Do you think we're, the market's still a, a little uh, ignored or do you think that the spotlight with the Reddit is, is really the big change that we've all been waiting for? Oh, it's going to wake up big time. It's like waking a sleeping giant. What I like about the Reddit, actually, is it's another sign that people are saying enough's enough. We want to hear our voice, and you can see the suppression. And when we see that energetically happening, it's like you said earlier, it's ready to explode. It's ready to come to the forefront. And also the other thing right now is that we're heading into a time where they're not going to do systems. They're going to be more transparent. There's not going to be able to be as much 
manipulation and smoke and mirrors. Like I said, that that hundred year old cycle is coming to an end. It's like the Roman Empire is uh, their days and Hail Caesar are that's being put to bed now. <laughs> so if people can understand that, that it's like full circle, and that's why these systems of manipulation are ending. Then it is a it is a verge. And on a funny note, I sleep with sheets that have silver in them. That's how much I love silver. <laughs> awesome. So you know, people don't understand what silver does. Like it is literally the best thing you could have, even in your home. <laughs> I know it's a magic metal. I, hey, I have a question for you. Um, okay, so you know, with the Reddit, you know, with the spotlight that it brought to the market. The expectation was, hey, we're all going to buy silver. It's going to push the market up. We even said on on the show, look, it's a different market. It's not just an equity. You know, there's there's a whole lot going on in the market. It's also a much much bigger market. Mm-hmm. And yet, what you have this thing where you have the expectation, you do something, so you're being active in a direction, but then it looks it looks at least on the surface as though the opposite happened. And I want to ask you your opinion on that because I'm sure you see that in your in in your sphere. This idea that okay, I've decided to make a change, but then the absolute opposite happened to me. Do you yeah, do, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, it happens a lot. Or say, oh, get done. It, it didn't come the way I thought it was going to come right away. It's not the way energy works too. When you make a shift like that, and you have a group of people standing up, going. We need change. That's another energetic force that draws more people in, more eyes, more awareness. Like, look at how many people, their heightened awareness came up going, what are these Reddit people doing? What is this about the silver? Right? So it now changes. It makes an impact on other people that you and I don't even have to know that start to go, I want to know more about the silver. What's going on? Why are they doing this? What's the manipulation? So there you get them critical thinking. So it doesn't necessarily have to happen tomorrow on the day that Reddit thought they were going to do this. But that energy started another cycle of people talking and wondering and then again pushing more to the openness of what's really going on, manipulation, and then people wanting to acquire metals and going, why do I want that? So it could come in another month. It could come in two months. It doesn't mean it's not happening. It is. And definitely is something happening on on the on the periphery for silver we're seeing a lot of structural structural changes for silver in terms of the supply and demand metrics uh, uh, we have even new projected growth for new cases of silver um, and we're now seeing the the paper f- silver futures and even mining share selling under a lot of precious but and under, under pressure but not to mention this uh, change in investment demand we're seeing a lot and we saw the, um, the, the silver Institute's report on who's who's demanding silver these days and it's actually a big sliver of that pie is the mom and pop taking delivery and and in terms of this um this tackling the old with uh, with a new system of of trust and transparency and this coordinated movement of of main street versus wall street uh people looking for for truth and want the truth to be revealed um there was a there was a good quote uh, by the art of war sun tzu cautioned against attacking an opponent head on he then said that you should set the battlefield so that you can actually he also said that you should set the field of battle so that you had already won before the con- conflict began and this particular writer from money metals wrote that yeah you don't attack the big players head on with paper shorts there's a way to do it behind the scenes and what's behind the scenes you take the physical precious metals away from the banking system you remove it and they can account for it that's the achilles heel here and that's what's so exciting it's like a a seed being planted it disappears it dies but then it germinates and then it grows into something mighty and that's what we're seeing here this movement is like a massive seed coiled ready to ready to sprout it's so exciting and it's all about the fundamentals too. You know, you don't see it necessarily on on the surface, but man, there's a lot boiling underneath. And it's all about the the basement of currencies that's going to lead to inflation. You've got the changing of systems. You have the supply demand that's going on dynamic in the market, and then the geopolitical unrest that happens as a result. Because at the end of the at the end of the day, we're all tied in in this world. Um, Tracy, any last minute thoughts from you? I just like to say to people that, one, get your medals. <laughs> Two, uh, it is changing. And don't be afraid of the changes. Don't buy into the fear narrative. Just stay focused on what you need to do and understand that these new systems are coming for 
the betterment of humanity and change can be painful but if you are prepared you have your precious metals you're doing your education you're going to be fine everyone's going to come through this fine and they'll see in the next couple of years they'll be happier in the end i feel like my takeaway from this is that there is having some faith and also backing that up with a whole lot of research so that you're very confident yeah. about what you're doing and you dip a toe in the water, you start small and you build from there because that once you have that skin in the game, you want to learn more and it helps you to have that faith in the market. Jerry, last thoughts from you? Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think it's very important to get your hands on it. Either go on the website, guildhallpreciousmetals.com. Give us a call if you don't see something on the website that you're looking for. Shameless. <laughs> Just get in, get in <laughs> touch with us and, and, and inquire. Um, scratch that itch. If, something, if, if something's on your mind that, uh, that your financial planner, your accountant is not addressing, if you heard something about reset, get in touch. We can, we can, uh, we can provide you with um, some information and education to help you make the best decision for your wealth going forward. These are the times you want to live in. You want to live in interesting times, and we're we're <laughs> living through it right now, and yeah. it's very exciting. Tracy, want to thank you so much for joining us here on the Real Money Show this week. I can't wait to do it again. I always find it. Uh, I, I hate to say selfishly therapeutic. Um, <laughs> J Jerry, thank you so much again as well for joining us, everyone. Great to have you as listeners. Great to have you as clients. Uh, we appreciate your patience with us. And uh, we can't wait to speak to you again next week. You've been listening to The Real Money Show on Global News Radio 640 Toronto.